Uh, it's my pleasure here today to share with you our previously joint cluster study on the retrospective review on the role of elective neck dissection in laryngectomy patients with clinically N0 carcinoma of the larynx. So uh, for some background, according to the Hong Kong Cancer Registry, there were 181 cases of newly diagnosed laryngeal cancer in Hong Kong in 2019. And total laryngectomy has been a common procedure for treating locally advanced laryngeal cancer or as a salvage surgery after failure of organ preservation treatment. Neck dissection is usually done together with total laryngectomy as the presence of metastatic lymph block disease has great impact on the survival and oncological outcome. Despite different study on the occult nodal metastasis and subsequent oncological outcome, there is no, still no consensus on the guideline directing the management of the neck in clinically N0 patients. So the objective of our, of our study is to events, investigate the incidence of occult nodal metastasis in patients who underwent total laryngectomy as primary or sulfur treatment of SCC of the larynx in our institutions and to compare the effect on survival between patients undergoing different surgical treatment of the neck. Furthermore, we wish to identify possible predators for occult nodal metastasis and we aim to make reasonable conclusion in the role of elective neck dissection in the study cohort. So a retrospective review of 10 years was performed in patients who underwent total laryngectomy and NTWC and HKWC between the year 2008 and 2017. An electronic record of consecutive patients being treated with the diagnosis code of carcinoma of larynx and the procedure code of total laryngectomy were obtained. And patients data were revealed only patients with clinically N0 disease were included. Exclusion criteria include those patients who had no preoperative -pre imaging, tumor other than SCC, and history of SCC of other hand neck regions. So we totaled. Um, of 77 patients were included in the study and 34 patients were excluded due to the following reasons. Clinical data of the patients were revealed to more restaged according to the AJCC TNM 8th edition staging system to maintain consistency of the results and the outcomes are revealed. So fiber analysis was done with Tepnemeyer method and log rent test and chi-square test and fish exact test was used for correlation analysis and the p-value of less than 0 0.05 is considered as statistically significant. So here are the results. Most of the patients were male and the mean age of 68.2 years old and 64% of the patients has total laryngectomy as a primary treatment and 36% of the patients had selfish laryngectomy. 34% of the patients had disease arising from the supraglottis, and most of the patients had the glottic disease, and around 28% of the patients had transglottic disease. Around one third of the patients had disease with midline involvement, and 81% of the patients had clinically um, local advanced disease of clinically either T3 or T4 disease. So total 65% and 14% of the patients received either bilateral or lipsilateral neck dissection, which made up of a total of 111 neck dissections. And 21% had no neck dissection. However, two of them underwent excision of bilateral level two limb node biopsies, and therefore the pathology results were included for further analysis. There were 13 patients had occult nodal disease, which was around 20%. Contralateral involvement was positive in two patients, which was around 4% only. So the whole study cohort has a five-year overall survival rate of 64.6% .6 and a median overall survival of 17.9 months. And the five-year disease-free survival rate was 72%. Uh, and there was no significant difference in both overall and disease-free survival comparing different neck treatment as shown on these survival curves. So let's break down the results into a few parts. We further analyze the results according to different subside and the T stage. And we also want to know whether there are any difference in the results in primary and salvage treatment. And to study the group of the patients without adjuvant treatment postoperatively, then we will go through the two patients who had contralateral lymph node involvement. So for the subside, 
In view of the reported difference in the rate of occult um, metastasis based on the subsite and the extent of the tumor, subgroup analysis was done. Mm -hmm. However, there is no statistically difference noted as shown here. And the survival curves of these subgroups also show no significant difference in the effect of um, neck dissection on the survival. So as clinical tumor stage is important for preoperative planning in our practice, the effects of clinically early and advanced disease group were separated for analysis on a correlation with occult nodal metastasis. And it was found to be nearly of clinical significance with a p-value of 0.057. The advanced disease group is separated for survival analysis, and there are 49 patients in the group who has neck di dissection done. But then the local uh, regional recurrence rate and the disease-free survival were not significant um, in the different neck uh, treatment groups. Total laryngectomy was done for both primary disease and uh, salvage treatment in the post-treatment failure patients. And therefore, subgroup analysis was done for the groups. And only one patient in the um, salvage group had positive nodal involvement compared with 28.6% of the 42 patients in the primary disease group with a p-value of 0.045. But then despite the significantly higher rate of occult nodal metastasis in the primary disease group, there was no significant difference on the effect of neck dissection on the disease-free survival rate in the two groups as shown here. Also, as adherent treatment of radiotherapy or chemo irradiation could potentially affect the rate of local regional recurrence, and hence the overall and disease-free survival of these patients. Patients who had no adjuvant treatment were separated for further analysis. And there were 30.8% of local regional recurrence in the group with no neck dissection done. And in patients who had ipsilateral or bilateral neck dissection done, the rate of local regional recurrence was 25 and 25.8% respectively. And this is not statistically significant. And also there is no significant effect on the overall and disease-free survival observed for different surgical treatment of the neck and the, in this group of the patients. So then let's take a closer look in the two patients who had contralateral neck limb top involvement. And it is observed that um, both patients had locally advanced disease and midline involvement of the tumor and the metastatic limb top were located in level two with positive lymphovascular infiltration observed in the specimen, and they had surgery done for primary treatment of um, carcinoma of the larynx, and there was no local regional recurrence after the surgery. And therefore, bilateral neck dissection seems to be reasonable in locally advanced primary disease with midline involvement. So in our series, the overall rate of nodal metastasis is 20.6%, although there is no survival benefit demonstrated in patients underwent um, net dissection. And in the subgroup analysis of um, primary versus salvage laryngectomy, there is significant difference between the rate of occult nodal metastasis. And it will say that in the treatment of the neck is warranted if the probability of nodal metastasis is greater than 20%. So the elective neck dissection in clinical N0 patients who undergo primary total laryngectomy is warranted. Although it will suggest that the risk of occult nodal disease is higher in clinical um, advanced T stage and superglide disease, there's no significant correlation in the subgroup analysis in this series. So another um, important factor to consider is whether an elective neck dissection can improve survival. A field study reported a survival benefit to elective neck dissection, but then it was not demonstrated in the recent meta-analysis concerning salvage laryngectomy. And the results were similar in our cohort or as a whole uh, or subgroup analysis. And also the incidence of occult Contralateral lymph node metastasis in the salvage um, in the whole cohort and is and also occult nodal metastasis in the salvage group is low. So we have to consider the management of the neck carefully in our patients in these groups. However, the results might be limited by the small number of patients included. 
So in conclusion, um, the likelihood of occult nodal metastasis is in clinically N0 laryngeal SCC with post-treatment failure is low in our series. And occult contralateral nodal metastasis is not common in our cohort. And midline involvement of a locally advanced disease seems to be good predators. And therefore, the neck dissection may be um, during a selfish laryngectomy for clinical N0 um, disease could be avoided, while observation for contralateral neck might be reasonable in laryngeal tumor without a midline involvement. So I would like to thank uh, my senior and colleague for the support of the study. Thank you very much.